If you've looked through the Appearances Library in Visualize, then you have a sense of just how many unique appearances Visualize can create. Each appearance is initially defined by one of the 16 appearance types that each have their own settings and quirks. Additionally, you can add up to four different texture types to an appearance for even more realism. This depth means that you can create almost any look, far more that can be covered in a single lesson like this. With that in mind, I'll focus on how to approach setting up appearances, so I'll only create a single metal appearance for this lesson. You'll then be able to create an experiment on your own, with the ready-made appearances available in the library as reference or inspiration for what can be achieved. I have here a bookend model that I'll apply the metal appearance to, but notice that, at the moment, there aren't any appearances loaded into the project. To load an appearance, you could switch to the File Libraries tab and search for an appearance similar to what you want to apply as a base for edits. This approach works well because of the variety of appearances available and the fact that some even have texture maps already applied. Functionally, however, there is no difference between editing a pre-existing appearance and a new appearance. So for this lesson, I'll create one from scratch. I'll switch back to the Appearances tab and can create an appearance by going to the Project drop-down menu and selecting Appearances, then New Appearance, right-clicking on a part without an appearance applied to it in the viewport and selecting either New Appearance or simply clicking the plus icon button at the top of the Appearances tab and selecting New Appearance. I'll click the plus button and New Appearance and a new matte appearance loads into the project. Before I do anything with the appearance settings though, I'll apply it to the part so I can understand how the changes I'm making will affect this specific model. I'll then use the appearance name field in the general subtab to change the name to body color. And I'm ready to start adjusting its settings. When making edits, the first thing you'll want to determine is which appearance type you'll use. This will determine the base appearance, as well as what settings are available to adjust. I'll switch to the metal appearance type, and you can see that it only has two settings, for color and roughness. If I switch to the metallic paint appearance type, however, you can see it has several more settings for the colors. Travel. Flakes. And clear coat. I'll switch to the glass appearance type next. And here you have only one color option, but others for the index of refraction, color density, and roughness of the glass. Each appearance type's settings are designed to control the unique aspects of that type and can be hovered over for a more specific description of what that setting does. For this lesson, however, I'll switch the type back to metal and start the setup by choosing a color. To change the color, I'll click on the color bar, and the color picker window appears. From here, you can see the original color that was selected when the window was opened, as well as the new color that is being selected. The white square on the color block to the right shows what the new color is, and you can change it by either dragging the block or using the sliders. Additionally, if you know the exact parameters of the color, you can use the drop-down menu in the Color tab to select the color model you want to use and input the parameters in either the HSV, Hue, Saturation, and Value model, the RGB, Red, Green, and Blue model, or the CMYK model, which is mainly used for printers. Alternatively, if you have an example of the color you want to open on your screen, you can use the eyedropper tool to sample it directly. By clicking, holding, and dragging the eyedropper icon, the color block will update to show what color the eyedropper cursor is over. You can sample things outside of Visualize as well. So if I bring up another window, and re-enable the eyedropper, I can use any color from it. If you find a color that you like, either with the eyedropper or by adjusting the parameters in a color model, 
you can save it locally as a swatch. To do this, I'll click on the Swatches tab in the Color Picker window. Notice in the Swatches tab, I have multiple pre-made palettes to choose from in the drop-down menu. But I want to create a new palette, so I'll click the Menu button next to the drop-down and click the plus icon. I'll name the new palette Bookend and press Enter. I'll then click the plus icon below the drop-down menu. Notice the color in the color block that I selected with the eyedropper has been added as a swatch to the right of the plus icon. The swatch is saved in the palette I created, and I can select it from that palette whenever I need to use it in the model in this project or in other projects. I'll use the patina green color I selected and click the X to close the color picker window. The metal appearance type has only one more setting, roughness, so I'll show its effect by increasing the roughness slider, and you can see the reflections on the part lose clarity. If you want to add even more detail, you can add textures to any appearance, but as you can see here, not every appearance type can use all four texture types. Textures will be covered in depth in later lessons. So, for now, this metal appearance is completely set up.